Today on this 2012 Dodge Charger, we're going to review and install the DrawType Max Frame Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number 76145. Alright, so this is what the hitch looks like when it's installed on our Charger. So our hitch is up tight against the bumper and it's also recessed towards the front. We've got this nice rounded collar here that makes a nice smooth finish on it, not a rough square. And you also notice that it has a two inch by two inch receiver opening. Now you look on the side of the hitch here, on both sides it looks like there's two hitch pin holes. This is your only real hitch pin hole right here, which is intended for a 5 8 diameter hitch pin, such as a PC3 right here. This is used for a J-pin stabilization pin. That pin slides into here, and you notice that this end will go in that hole, presses against the accessory or ball mount, and keeps it from rattling around. You should only use this hole for that purpose. For our safety chain hooks coming from our trailer, we've got the simple loops on the very bottom. This will fit a wide variety of hooks that are out there. Looking forward on our receiver, you'll notice it hits the main body of the hitch right here, and the cross tube is visible, but you have to be pretty much underground to see it. Now we'll go ahead and cover the weight capacities of the hitch. First off, it's going to have a 675 pound tongue weight, which is the weight that pushes down on the hitch, and then this also has a 4,500 pound pulling weight. Now of course you always want to double check with your owner's manual or your dealership to make sure that the engine and transmission combination can handle these kinds of weights that the hitch can do. Next we'll go ahead and give you some measurements to help you out in selecting some accessories such as a ball mount, a bicycle rack, or a cargo carrier. From top of receiver opening down to the ground will be about 10 inches. And from the center of a hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper, we came out to about five and a half inches. Now we'll go ahead and show you how we install the hitch. All right, to begin our install, make things a lot easier. I know it seems like a bit of a hassle, but take off this bumper cover right here makes life a lot easier to install this hitch, as well as lowering the exhaust. To start off, we're gonna remove these two fasteners here and here. There's a place where you can put a flat blade screwdriver to pop out the inside of the rivet and pop it loose. If you can, use a trim panel tool, get it loosened up and work it out as well if it's giving you fits. Our fender well liner has to be separated from this bumper cover here. Pretty easy, you just kind of pull gently back on it, maybe push the inside a little bit, and it pops loose. Now there's a bolt hidden up in here that you have to remove. We'll need a 10 millimeter socket. Get that fastener out of the way. This is all the fasteners on our driver's side here. We're gonna repeat the same process back over on the passenger side. Okay, that's it for the fasteners towards the top. On the bottom, there'll be a few you have to remove. There's gonna be one right here, again, using your 10 millimeter socket. Now you may or may not have an under belly pan, like shield or something underneath here. that will connect up to here. If you have that, great, you need to loosen those up as well, but our vehicle doesn't have that, so we won't have to worry about it. This is all done on the driver's side. Once again, all, everything's the same on the passenger side. Now our bumper cover here has a series of snaps and they're pretty darn tight and it's gonna make a loud noise when you pop them. So just be steady with the pressure on it and pull it straight out. The series of snaps will go up around the taillight as well. Now we're gonna need our trunk opened up for our next step. Now our bumper cover has a light right here. We can just go ahead and get behind it before we take it completely off, twist it counterclockwise, and pull the socket out with the light bulb. There's some fasteners underneath here that we have to remove. There's one bolt hidden behind the tail light, so we need to loosen that up. First up, we'll loosen this rubber strip up here. There is some snap fasteners, so we want to use a trim panel tool to kind of help work them out and pop them out. There it goes. Now it's adhesive right here, so try not to tear it off up at the top here. Next, we need to get behind tail light by getting behind the liner in the trunk. This plastic rivet here, we have to remove. The trim panel tool helps to work this out. You may have to do it in stages. and may help to get behind the liner after a certain extent and pop it loose that way. This tie-down bracket right here, we have to re remove that as well. We'll be using a T25 Torx bit to loosen up the fastener. Kind of work it around and it should pop off. Now pull the liner back and you'll see three nuts on the inside here. We'll need an eight millimeter socket to remove those guys. Two you can see here and here. There's one further back. Now we'll work our light loose and we can disconnect it from the electrical right here. There's a little tab in the center. 
towards right here, push down on it, and you can pull it apart. Here's the one fastener we need to remove. And there's the two snaps here and here. And when you take the bumper cover off, you may want to, before you do that, kind of pry these up a little bit to get them unlatched. Pull back on the plastic a little bit. That'll make the bumper cover much easier to come loose. At this point, you want to get an extra set of hands. Everything's loosened. We'll go ahead and pull back up on it. Work everything loose. Now we have one more electrical connection right here. Press down on tab here in the center, and it'll come apart. May help to push in and then pull out. There it goes. Now we'll carefully set this to the side so we don't get scratched up. Back underneath the vehicle, we need to loosen our exhaust and lower it down a little bit to give us room to put our hitch up, which will slide up in here. The rubber hangers, left and right side of the exhaust. We're gonna spray down with some spray lubricant. I'm using a silicone base lubricant here and we'll go ahead and pry these off or there's a special exhaust tool that you can use to remove them with. By the exhaust tips there's a hanger here and here. It'll be easy enough to take a 13 millimeter socket and then bolt them. That was our passenger side. Let's do it one more time over on driver's side. Now when you get the last bolt out Make sure it comes down nice and easy so you don't damage the exhaust. Now on our driver's side frame rail here, there's a weld nut in here that we have to clean out. Now chances are it's gonna be corroded up pretty good, so you wanna spray some lubricant in there and use a tube brush to help clean it out. You get out all the dirt and debris. The part number we're using for the brush is 814092. So you wanna take the bolt that comes with the hitch and make sure it threads in okay. Let's get to installing some hardware now. We'll take this long block here and a half inch carriage bolt. We're gonna install this hole right here. To help us do that, we'll use include a wire pull. So I'm gonna put it in the hole we're going to use and out this larger hole here, we'll thread the block in. Slip it onto the wire, push into the frame, then take a carriage bolt and thread that in. It may help put it in head first and pull it on through. So our hitch was going to install on our driver's side using this hole and this bolt and this threaded hole. Dra passenger side here, we're gonna use these two individual holes. Once again, we use supplied bolt leaders and put in our hardware. Now, you wanna get an extra set of hands once again to help lift the hitch up. We'll take the bolt leader, make sure it goes through the oval hole going towards the front of the vehicle on the hitch. And this is the driver's side. We have that one threaded weld nut, so we'll take her. The only hex bolt that comes with the hitch, and we'll thread that in. Then we'll remove our bolt leaders. You can unthread them or pull them off. Then we'll add our conical tooth washer, which you will make sure your teeth in the washer always face towards the hitch. You can use that to kind of help pinch the bolt to one side and then install the nut. Same thing applies to the carriage bolt on the other side. With all our hardware loosely in place now, we'll go ahead and tighten it down. We need a three quarter inch socket for the carriage bolts with the nuts. I'm gonna push the exhaust out of the way as needed so you can get access to the bolt. On our metric bolt, we can use the same socket here or 19 millimeter. Once they're all snug down, we'll torque the bolts down as specified instructions using our torque wrench. At this point, we can go ahead and put our vehicle back together. We'll start with our exhaust, work away towards the front, then put our bumper cover back on. Now I'll finish it for a draw tight Max Frame Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number 76145 on this 2012 Dodge Charger.